Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today we're going to be talking Christmas decorations. I've got my DIYs, all my gnomes, all the different things that I've done over the years. But my favorite thing by far that we do as a family tradition is we decorate our Christmas stockings. Every person does their very own. And today I'm going to show you how to do it. It's so fun, so easy, and a fantastic tradition. And I would suggest that you start it, that tradition in your family as well. Or you can do it for classes, youth groups, even kindergartners can do this. It is awesome. So let's have some fun. This burlap Christmas stocking I ordered from Amazon and I will put a link in the description below if you're interested in picking up your own Christmas stockings. They come wrapped in this package and so they're very clean. I love the burlap but it does kind of wrinkle and this is one thing that I've learned. You don't want to just go ironing it. I kind of melted one. <laughs> so definitely you're going to want to put a towel down before you iron and then you shouldn't have any problem. I'm just showing you how I did it. Uh, this particular one's not even plugged in, but I'm just giving you the technique because I'm actually working on a plastic tablecloth. But if you don't iron it, you will be thinking, why didn't I iron that? <laughs> Here's the kind of stocking that we've done in the past, the furry stockings. Sometimes we've done felt stockings and these techniques can work for those, but I have to say the burlap is my favorite. This is the first time we've ever done this one. It's great because it's more of a blank canvas to start with. So I'm gonna show you a very simple, easy way. Every single one of us in our family does one and everyone picks what they're gonna have. Everyone gets to choose for themselves. I'm gonna be doing this one for my son because he is out of state right now and no matter whether they're here or out of state we still put a stocking up for our whole family. I'm going to outline this. There's so many things that you can do with this burlap. You can either use markers, you can use acrylic paints, you can use glue and glitter. Really anything works and I'm going to show you how it looks if you use marker and I will say that my marker was kind of drying out so I switched gears and started using some paint. Now I really love unicorn spit. It gives such a vibrant color to anything that you paint. So I'm using unicorn spit. Again, I can put a link below. You can get this from Amazon. It's in a lot of craft stores, sometimes even at Walmart, but in order to get the exact colors that you want, it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and order it on Amazon. And, or you can just use any kind of, of paint that you can get your hands on, any kind of crafter's paint. Again, I just use Unicorn Spit because I love the vibrancy of it, but, and it's what I have. So I'm just covering this up with my black paint to give it my first little coat. Now, what I would suggest is, here's a, here's a look at some of the different colors that you can get if you order a group of Unicorn Spit. And I will say, it goes a long way. I got my Unicorn Spit a couple of years ago, and I am very frugal with it, but it has lasted for a long time. So it's kind of an, an initial investment, but once you have it, it's great to have. And there's so many things that you can do with it. You can even use it on wood. Okay, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm getting no kickback for that. I'm just telling you what I'm using. Another nice thing about these, this canvas is you can draw on what you want to do with a pencil before you actually start with the marker. And if you don't like what you see, you can erase it, sort of. My son said, well, I don't think erasing really works. It does, sort of. But mostly you want to kind of have a plan of what you want to do ahead of time. I usually sketch out what I want to do on a piece of paper just to make sure I'm not a very good artist. My freehand ability isn't the best, <laughs> so I always have to make sure that I can actually make it work before I put it on the canvas. The beauty of doing these stockings is we do them every single year, so it doesn't have to stand the test of time for 10 years or whatever. It's just this year, and I usually try to do something that 
I'm thinking about what's on my mind, what, what kind of has to do with me that year, or with the person whose talking I'm doing. Everyone does their own, unless they're out of town. <laughs> and I have three grandchildren, and my children, their spouses, grandchildren, everybody, and we line the entire mantle with our Christmas stockings, and it's so much fun. I will say that if um, some of my kiddos end up putting some sort of a little thing in there that's, I don't know, if you are in watch the Marvel movies, a lot of times they have what they call Easter eggs, things that you have to look really close to even see, and then if you really know what it is, you'll, anyway, we try to put little Easter eggs in, possibly. Not always, but you can. I'll go ahead and point out the little Easter eggs when I show you all the stockings at the end of what we've done this year. Some of them are more obvious than others, but it just makes it a little more fun. Here is my cartoon skills, which are very minimal at best. <laughs> and if you can't tell, I'm making a bumblebee. The first few years that we did our Christmas stockings, we kind of overthought and we just were stressed about getting the right thing and it was just too much. And that's the one thing I don't want. And so I've really tried to talk my family down off the ledge, so to speak, and just say, come on, this is just for fun. Don't stress about it. Do what comes naturally and easily to you and it's not a, ma a major deal so now that we've kind of recognized it doesn't have to be so fancy it just needs to be a fun thing when we do this we all get together and there's actually when we did this time there were 10 of us at the a table at once so I try to have quite a few paint brushes some glue some glitter some markers, all those things. And now because we've been doing this for about six years, I've kind of built up a little stock, but you don't have to have all the things that I have. This could be a very simple, easy craft to do with a group. You can have some basic things. Now I have this glue that I um, actually, because I, we do this so often, I went ahead and got a great big gallon size of it from Walmart because it comes cheaper that way. And then I ordered a seven pack of condiment bottles. I'll put links for these things below, but it ended up being that you need about a thing of glue per, for every two people. And then it's also nice to have a lot of different kinds of glitter, which you can buy in these packs. You don't need a lot of glitter, but it's nice to have different colors. But again, when you're getting started, you could just stick with some of the basic colors. You can pick some up at the dollar store. They have little packets or, you know, wherever, you, wherever crafts are. Now, the one thing that I will say is you don't want to over glue because your glitter will have a hard time looking clean if it's a big goopy mess. Now here's the biggest thing that you need to do. Make sure that you have a piece of paper underneath and you pour off your glitter onto your paper because we're going to put it back in the jar. You don't want to waste glitter and this is something again if you're doing a class you want to teach this skill because it's not something that a lot of people automatically know and then you pour that glitter right back in the jar now you'll notice that I didn't I poured it off to the side because up on top my black is still wet down below the yellow is still wet so I want to just pour off to the side so that the glitter doesn't fall onto those areas where I don't want that color of glitter hope I'm making sense and if you do this technique then you'll be able to do a lot of different colors save your glitter and do it all in an hour's time instead of having to wait for each process to dry. Now, when you put the glitter back in the bottle, there will still be just a little film of glitter on the paper. And so just take that and flick it off with your finger. And I usually have, we have carpet underneath our dining room table and I just flick it off onto the carpet. Once we're completely done, I'll vacuum and get that glitter before it gets spread all over the house. And then you notice that I have a plastic tablecloth on the table. I just plan on throwing that away because little pieces of glitter end up everywhere. But you don't wanna just pour your glitter out. You wanna save and reuse. Now I'm going to do a second color of glitter. And here's what's so great about this. I still can reuse this glitter too, even though it's gonna be a different color because the silver glitter 
is glued down now. Even though it's not dry, it's not gonna really fall off. If you're gonna teach this to whoever, your family, your friends, whoever might be doing this, don't forget to teach this step. So again, if you're teaching a class, if you're doing this with your family, you definitely wanna know this second part. And that is when you glue and glitter with the second color, do the same process again. Put your glitter on and then pour it off onto your paper. Do not commingle it with the other color or then that no longer is viable for your next project. And this is how you can make a little glitter last a long time. So see, I'm going to flick off the yellow colored glitter and you notice there's no silver glitter in that really. So I can put that away and save that. Then again, I'm gonna get that little film that's left on and flick it off onto the floor or onto your table. And so we have a clean slate for the next one. So every single person who's doing a stocking gets one piece of paper and one thing of glue, or you can share the glues with two people. And then we all kind of share all the other things. And that is really the main important thing that you need to know if you're using glitter. Now I know my sons do not necessarily love glitter, but it turns out so nice. It adds so much to it that I found my oldest son who is the one who calls glitter Satan's dust. <laughs> He's joking, of course, but he doesn't particularly love glitter. I noticed he did put glitter on his stocking this year, even though he had an option of using only markers and paints because it does jazz things up. So trust me, a little glue, a little glitter can make a very fun decoration on, on a you know tight budget, really. I mean, it's an initial investment. And then once you have it, you're good. Now I got a little... Uh, my silver glitter onto my black door because that paint was still not quite dry. And I knew that was going to happen, but I just wanted to hurry along here. So I'm just putting a little more black paint over the top of it. So it'll be shimmery, but not as silver as it was. Okay, now I want to talk about how to do lettering. You want to start your glue off on something else just to make sure that it's not bunched up or dry or whatever. And you want to have the thinnest stripes for when you're writing words as you possibly can do. Because when it's thick, it just gets gummed up. And once you put the glitter on, it kind of seeps around. Trust me, it just looks so much better if you do a very thin, thin line and that's one reason why I absolutely love these condiment bottles because you can get the tips that are very very small now I'm sure that Elmer's glue just in the regular bottle would work just fine too but this is a way that I don't have to buy a whole bunch of Elmer's glue bottles now if you can't tell I'm doing this stocking for my son who is on a mission in Utah and that's the Utah uh, state I don't know what you call it, motto is the beehive state. <laughs> anyway, so since he's a missionary there, that is how I'm doing his stocking this year. So that's, that's the idea. You do a stocking based on what you're kind of doing, what you're into, what's your favorite things, or it could even just be what is on your mind today. What song did you just hear? What makes you happy? It could be anything. There's no wrong way to do a Christmas stocking. And then, now this glue isn't completely dry, but you don't wanna flick it too, too much. Just little tiny flicks, because sometimes the glue will ooze down. Now, the thing that I've found is to make sure you let that completely dry before you hang it. Otherwise, the glitter will start oozing off. It's really best if you let it dry overnight before you even consider hanging it. Here's mine. This is the one that I did for me. DIY is my happy place. And of course, I'm into gnomes, so my stocking is a gnome. And I'm going to set those aside. Those two are both still drying. Now, here's the ones that were done the previous night. These are completely dry. I keep them laid flat until they're completely dry. And then once they dry, the, the glue kind of isn't so bubbly either. And there, you can actually do layers. This is the one my husband did. He did green and then another color of green. He's very artistic. This is my oldest son, and I love this Grinch hand with the ornament. And what's really clever about it is he's at, in law school right now, so he put the little scales that represent law school. 
His wife, Chelsea, did a cute red truck with a Christmas tree in it. See, there's just any type of thing. Anything will work. My next son, he put his favorite sports team, and he's hoping that they're going to get to go to the Rose Bowl. So he depicts them as if they're at the Rose Bowl. And I guess we'll find out this weekend if they actually will be going to the Rose Bowl, but he's anticipating. <laughs> now look at this wonderful snowflake that his wife did. And I just think it's so cute. I, I think there's never enough snowflakes in the world. I mean, they're just so great. Nathan is next and he has an online streaming gaming thing that he does. So this is his logo for that. I just love it. If you hadn't noticed, we have two Hannahs in our family. The second Hannah did a gingerbread house. Look at the roof of the house. You've got the sidewalk coming up. I just think it's so cute and so clever. And everyone has different takes on how they're going to do it. This is the first year my five-year-old granddaughter, Lucy, wanted to do her very own. We've always helped her in the past, and she's done Olaf. I think she's done different things. And this year, she wanted to do her own. Isn't that the best I just think it's so great she wrote her name. So since she was doing her own, our two-year-old granddaughter, Brielle, wanted to do her own. And I have to say, these might be my favorite two of all. We went ahead and helped Brielle with her name so we'd know whose it was. I'm not sure what she was doing there, but I think it's a happy face. Nonetheless, I love it. And then finally, our, our little, we went at the end. McKay's one years old, and he loves sports. So, of course, his is all sports this year. Okay, now I'm going to show you the time lapse of our stocking night. It was so fun. Unfortunately, I only have about, there's still a few on the outer edges that weren't, you couldn't see in this. But it was so much fun. Look at little Lucy in the bottom right. She's five. It's so fun to see everybody's process of how they came up with what they were doing. And I will say there was a lot of fun conversations. We had chili and cinnamon rolls, and it was just a fantastic night. And, and actually a night that we all look forward to all year long. And we start talking about it about in June. Ooh, what are you going to do on your stocking this year? So fun. And that's how we do it. Now, I can't really see the glitter on my carpet, but trust me, it's there. We've been shaking off the glitter onto the carpet. So what I do is hurry and immediately start vacuuming it up. Now, if you have tile, if you have hardwood, still vacuum it up. Those little glitters will try to get into the crevices and definitely if you vacuum it, then you don't have the mess of the glitter. And that is my tip of the day. Okay, 2021 is in the books and this is how it shakes out. I absolutely love it. It's so much fun and a fantastic family tradition that we will carry on for many years to come. What can I say? <laughs> Christmas stockings are the best. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to, please like, subscribe, and share this out. And don't forget to check on the links below for all the products that I talked about today. And I'll see you again soon.